So let's get started. We are running out of time. So in this segment, I'm going to be talking about uh, lightning protection. Um, and uh, what's important, which is actually uh, the principle or the, these principles that I'm going to be talking about in the beginning of my presentations, presentation, they are actually general lightning protection principles. So it's independent from any specific system. It just talks about attachment of uh, lightning capture, striking distance, corona stream le leader pro uh, progression, electric field intensification, separation, uh, separation distance, ground potential rise and risk assessment. Evet bu sunumda biraz yıldırım teorilerini size anlatmaya çalışacağız. İşte korona deşarjı nedir? Yıldırımın düşerken olan mesafesi nedir? Onun dışında separation distance. Ben biraz izoleli iletken konusunda bahsettim size. Hani es koruma mesafesi yoksa izoleli inmemiz tarzında. Risk analizi, ondan sonra toprak potans potansiyel gerilimi, adım geriliminden oluşabilecek hasarlar. Hızlıca Martin bunları geçmeye çalışacak süremiz yettiğince. Okay, so uh, the next slide I'm gonna gonna spend any time on it because uh, Sarar already uh, covered this. It's it's pretty much explaining formation of lightning and uh, you know that you have a downward leader and upward leaders and then you know uh, polarization of the clouds and the ground. So you had videos on it. So evet, I'm not tüm, gonna... Sorry, tüm sunumu alabilmek için şöyle bir şey soracağım. E, İngilizce olarak anlayanlar el kaldırabilir mi? Çoğunluk anlıyor mu? E, çoğunluk anlıyor. Yani sunumun tamamını alabilmek için çünkü bir saatimiz var. Dört buçukta yemek hazır olacak. E, I'm not translate uh, step by step general information. Yeah. You can go on very hardly. We, they want to listen all presentation. All presentation. Yes, okay. okay. Because okay. they know English. Lots of people. Okay. Okay. okay. okay. That's that's good. Okay. So uh, here, uh, what what I'm showing is that uh, in the beginning of the formation of the lightning, you have a uh, the cloud and you have earth. So the Earth in this case has a positive charges. The cloud has a negative charges. So in the formation of this polarization, the positive charges are in the upper portion of the cloud. But then the next thing is that you have a formation or uh, downward leaders and upward leaders. And then the upward leader, they both progressing against each other up until one successfully connect and then drain the uh, the energy into the ground so it uh, happens right in in this point and then everything is connect um, uh, related to lightning protection levels so and the currents that are associated with it so if i have the lightning protection one which is the most conservative approach uh, I have 200 kiloamps of current, uh, and when I go to um, protection level four, uh, so that's actually uh, only 100 k only. I mean, it's a lot of energy, but it's, uh, that's how it is. Here, uh, it's important to understand that lightning is unpredictable event uh, of nature, uh, and so it's it's really difficult to judge where the lightning actually going to struck and then also you can never get 100 percent protection that's why you, when you look at the protection levels you have 99 percent probability of catching the energy but there's still some bypasses that happen along that so in this particular case you have a uh, a power line that actually launched upward leader right here and then you have a tree that also uh, uh, a launch upward leader but you see that the pre prefer connecting point was with the tree not with the transmission line so in order for this connection to happen you have to have a certain uh, uh, parameters so the striking distance can be between 16 and 250 meters 
the downward leader step distance, so it goes in steps, they are about 50 meters long, and they go in velocity of 10 meters per microsecond, followed by a 50 microsecond pause. So it's not just you typically see the main discharge, the main event, but when you look at it with a high-speed camera, there are multiple flashes that follow. The upward leader, on the other hand, has a uh, velocity of uh, 0.4 to 1.2 uh, meters per microsecond, and it's pulsing in 10 to 20 microseconds intervals. So that's, these conditions have to be met in order to actually uh, make the connection. So uh, m most of the placement methods, so the method that you actually use to place your terminals on the structure, use separation distance. So that's a very important parameter in lighting protection. So to expand on the point that I made in the previous uh, slide, is that if I have a protection level one for 99% protection, uh, so if I uh, do it to electrogeometric model, I'm applying it to ge electrogeometric model, so I will have the sphere that I'm rolling over the structures, have, the sphere has a, uh, a radius of 20 meters. But still, I have a 1% chance that 3 kA current will bypass my terminal, my lightning protection system, and strike the, the, the, the, the structure. If I go to level four, protection level four, so I have the, the bypass strike into the structure could be up to 16 kilo amps uh, in intensity. So that's really uh, where this, the protection level come from. So it's very important to understand this principle. Um, this is just uh, show a laboratory picture of uh, how the upward and leader and downward leader progress. What's also important in uh, uh, optimizing the formation of corona, which is the first step in lightning protection, when the field intensifies, so there is a formation of corona above the, uh, above the terminal. And uh, Dr. Moore, uh, uh, there was on a high elevation in New Mexico in the United States, so he did actually study uh, to prove this point, that you actually can have a sharp point or you can have a dull point, and it actually show, uh, the, his study, I mean, show that, you know, blunt radius between five and 10 millimeters uh, uh, can, you know, pretty much took all the strikes, but the points, the sharp points uh, did not. So this is same, principle that I'm talking about, just the different representation. So this is stream-free corona. So it's just corona above the, above the lightning protection uh, uh, terminal, which actually eventually progresses to stream corona, which start, you know, traveling away from the terminal. And then you have a stream zone. So you actually have a formation the upward leader. And in many cases, like you can, not many cases, but when you have a terminal that's maybe sharp, the, the, this step never happens. When you go from the stream-free corona to this point, it might not happen because it just, the conditions are not there. So it's important that the lightning protection system terminal is optimized that actually this transition between the stream-free corona to stream leader system is actually happening in some type of control fashion. Uh, again, this is a high speed camera video that shows um, the length of the, uh, the streamer, you know, so it's, it's about 0.7 meters. But also what's important that the E, e field that exists is about 500 kilovolts per meter. So that's a pretty high energy. Uh, you know, that actually will, will create the upward streamer. <clears throat> so electric field uh, is the most important parameter in lighting protection. The field intensification factor at a point of 
uh, interest, Ki, is the ratio of the electric field at the point of the ambient value of the field due to the thundercloud and the downward leader. So there is actually a ratio between the velocities of the upward and downward leader that actually create the K factor. It's also, if you have just a green field, like no structures along, uh, no structures in a, in a field. So you have a uniform uh, field lines, right? So there's nothing standing in the way, so everything is somewhat uniform. Uh, but soon you put a structure there, uh, which has a lightning terminal and it has a certain shape. You can see that the field lines get compressed. So they are the, uh, the electric field is weakened by bringing the, uh, you know, the field lines closer together. And, you know, the studies now, because we have the high-speed cameras and we have a more sophisticated equipment, so people really monitoring these things and, you know, getting data how it's done. So uh, it's, it's uh, uh, important to understand that you have a different statistical probability if, if you have a sharp point on the building or if you have, you know, uh, some, something like that. So it, it's going to vary. I mean, if, if I go and struck the, the, it's a much lower statistical probability for the building to be struck here than here. And also the higher points have a much higher statistical probability to be struck. It, there is a difference also between slander structure. If you have a communication tower, just a very slender structure, or if you have a building that, you know, is large and has different elevations because the distribution of the field is different. So this actually proves the point. I mean, I was talking about the Ki factor. So you have a 15 meter tall slim structure which has Ki 3.5. And then if you have a building like this, so it's the same height, it's actually, you know, um, the structure is the same height like the, uh, uh, the, the slanted structure here, but you can see that the K fact factor here is uh, much higher. So it goes, uh, I mean lower, I'm sorry. You go pretty much from 15.2 uh, to 7.1 and 2.3 to 3.5. Five. So it, th that's what I'm saying, that you have to be sensitive uh, or the methods, the placement methods should be sensitive to this uh, fact. Uh, another important part is a ground potential rise. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, like we, let's say we just uh, designing lightning protection system. So we, we know that we have to put it in the earth, right? So you have, let's say you drive on ground route and you connect the system to it. Uh, and then um, you, uh, and maybe that's it, that's, that's all you do. So, you know, many standards refer that if you have a grounding system for lightning protection system, it should be less than 10 ohms. That's kind of the criteria. But what's very important also is, let's say you're in a petrochemical facility and you just have that one ground rod for, for your lightning protection system, but you cannot omit the fact that, you know, the energy has to dissipate in the earth. So you're going to have a ground potential rise. And I'm leading to it because there is a separation distance and, and so forth. But it's very important that you actually bonding the system together, that you don't have any sparking or any cross flashing. So it's, it's important to pay equal uh, attention to a, uh, depends on what facility you are. I mean, if you, let's say, in a commercial building, it's maybe not as critical if you have a storage with explosives or with uh, vapor fumes that can leak from, uh, from a structure because you have a much higher probability that, you know, if it gets struck, then it's disastrous. So if you have a, you know, the standards also point you to, a, uh, uh, you know, if I have a petrochemical facility and then I have a fumes coming out, so they, they form a cloud 
and there are different ratings are is it happen all the time or is it happen just occasionally that you have a valve that opens and re releases the fumes so that's that's very important so if you have actually strike to the earth right here so you actually the energy starts traveling away from the striking point here it's re represented as a uniform concentric lines like you would take a stone and you throw it in the water and you have the ripple effect that you have the rings coming out but because the earth is not uniform so it's a not uniform effect it's you know the the wave will travel to the more conductive parts of the soil and less to the higher resistivity of the soil um, okay so this is a definition of touch potential so you know my example really is taken from a uh, you know, like a substation that you would have a large amount of energy uh, you know hitting the the grounding system like a pulse but it's the same principle like you talking about lightning so if I standing here and I touch this and I am on a you know native earth so uh, you know let's say that I'm gonna get a thousand uh, amps fault um, and the, my grounding resistance is low it's only five ohms so I have a 5,000 potential rise in this this section then body human body can be represented as a thousand ohm resistor and uh, so when I actually I can calculate that you know my the touch potential is 2,500 volts and it carry 2.5 amps current so that's enough that it can kill me in usually in substation and stuff you have a uh, material on the f floor and the ground that's that has a high resistivity so that's one reason or one point to uh, that you can reduce actually that but the better option is really that you actually standing on the mat sorry uh, let's see that you standing on a mat so it's a mesh that's actually in the ground and that reduces actually that equalizes the potentials that are very the differences are very small and that way you protect it and safe so then we have a step potential so that's pretty much the same principle that if I am in the substation and I, I have a meter between my feet I can get electro electrocuted just by the current passing through my body on a native soil if again if I have a uh, you know some type of mesh then I, c I am okay or I would have to walk like this I mean to to really minimize the the the, the step voltage so um, risk management uh, again Sardar talk about risk management already so every standard that's out there uh, actually recommends some type of uh, protection uh, or risk assessment which is a British standard uh, NFPA 7 and IEC yeah the French standard so it's actually important when you do system that uh, you can calculate it by hand of course but again this you saw that slide today already that there, there are software so it could be directly from IEC or, or people even make their own uh, uh, spreadsheets like this you have to put the protection level you want to do what kind of facility you're protecting you know if it's explosive again or if it's just a regular uh, house or if it's a hospital so they that's all included so you actually fill all these uh, uh, the, you enter the information press the button and the software give you the probability in your area of the striking th that you can have a direct lightning strike into your facility so it's it's a good point a piece of information of course somebody can argue that can say well I have one probability of lightning strike me in 10 years right so you say well I'm gonna ignore it but how about if the for the one strike happened tomorrow right so it's you know it's a kind of like a chicken and egg uh, type of uh, situation so but it gives you valuable information 
even for the owner of the facility that you're doing your due diligence and you know based on that you can actually select the protection level of the equipment so now I'm gonna talk about separation distance so that actually is published in the uh, IC 62305-8 so then we give you some guidance on how to do it but uh, there are pretty much several different ways that you can you can protect the structure you can have a structure that has an exposed system it's a non-insulated system so you have a conventional cable so that it's not insulated it's just a conventional cable so uh, in this case if I have some conductive body around again I can calculate separation distance or I can I have to bond uh, the equipment that can potentially receive the the cross flash then another thing is that we can uh, have a system that doesn't touch the structure at all I mean so I have tall masts or I can have a catenary wires and they actually protect the building without actually allowing the energy go through the building then we have an option that we have actually uh, down conductors or cables that are insulated and they actually are rated for a certain distance so let's say I have an insulated cable but the, the strength the electrical strength of the insulation is let's say like a conventional lightning cable that's one meter offset from the from the uh, structure but it's actually running right along the structure or I'm going to talk about also a conductor that's um, uh, it's a it's a like a advanced so to speak coaxial cable that holds the energy inside of the conductor so the building doesn't get en energized uh, as much and then the most of the energy actually travels right to the earth so if you have a mast uh, so and then you have um, uh, if you have a it gets struck by lightning uh, by the energy and travels through so the mast has certain resistance and uh, you know you're gonna get some voltage drop when current uh, travels through a structure or through a conductor the current travels through it so you always have some you know um, uh, voltage drop across the, the the structure if the structure is taller you're gonna get the uh, you know you're gonna have a higher resistance so you will have a larger potential rise so that's one parameter or if the current is larger of course that's gonna influence the the same situation as well so in this situation this uh, actually representation is that I have the same slanted structure that will have a potential rise but next to it I have a building that actually is a zero potential because there's it's a in close proximity but it does not carry the lightning strike so that you can just say it's a it's a you know zero potential and then you know now I have to pay attention between the distance between the building because that I can have a potential cross flash so I have to calculate the separation distance or um, you know I have to bond the building with the mast so the the standard actually gives you a formula that uh, is the formula of the separation distance and it has a uh, several parameters in it so you have the K factors so one thing is that you have to be sensitive of the protection level that you're choosing which is right here so you have one two and three and four and those are the constants for the ki then same thing you have to pay attention of the material the building is made out of so if the if it's air the the km is one and if it's any other material it's half of that it's 0.5 and then also you have to pay attention of the how many conductors do you have so again if I have only one conductor down conductors the KC is one and then if it's two it's 0.66 and three is 0.4 so those are the variables that that I'm using in my calculations so um, 
if you set uh, Km and Kc in one, so the formula simplifies, and then you have actually uh, the curve for class one, two, and three that indicates you know, the length of the cable and the separation distance. So another variable in this whole thing is the length of the cable. So if we, the graph that we have uh, is, uh, you know, if you put it in a vertical fashion, you see that the class one is the most conservative, so it would overlap with the roof. Uh, the class two almost touching the roof, and then, uh, you know, the class three and four might pass, but you still have to calculate it. So, you know, this kind of gives you the idea uh, that, you know, uh, the, you know what, you, what can you expect, but you really advise to do the calculation uh, every time for the separation distance. So in this, it's a more specific example. So you have, uh, sorry, so you have a, uh, uh, now you have the, the freestanding mast and you have a catenary wire and it has a certain distance between the roof and the strike goes right in the middle. So you would assume that the current will split two different ways and 50% of the energy go one way and the 50% energy will go on, on the other way. But we know that there are nothing's perfect in the real world. So you maybe the strike is not exactly in the middle. You have changes in the impedance of the wire depends where the light, lightning strike actually strikes exactly. So the KC factor is one only for single conductor, but for two conductors, it, the standard says it doesn't split 50-50, but it just splits uh, to 0.66, and if you have three or more conductors, it's 0.44. So there's some uh, uh, fudge factor in, in these uh, uh, constants that you can apply, and uh, uh, you know, that helps actually uh, with, with the calculation. So now we talk about that we can have a special insulated cable and I know you using it in Turkey also, I mean it's uh, popular. So what it does is that as I mentioned, so if I have a, a cable that has an electrical strength that if I have a building here and my bare cable, bare conductors over here, and it's a meter distance. So let's say this, this cable goes through a insulated mast, but this is a mast that's actually grounded, that's steel mast, and then you have the conductors coming out, so you see it's very close to the structure, but because of the insulation strength, it really is, you're safe, but you still the cable is also rated for a certain energy that can withstand before it would cross flash through the installation. So, you know, it's, it, it, it really is an easier installation because you're really, you know, running very close to the, the, the uh, conductor. Yeah. Uh, I will let uh, uh, bir şeyler eklemek istiyorum buraya. Uh, özellikle iletken yüzeylerde, GSM kulesi olsun ya da uh, İletkenin iletkene değdiği yüzeylerde kesinlikle bu sistemi kullanmamız gerekiyor. Yakalama ucu tamamen izoleli. İzoleli iletken en altından giriyor, tepesine kadar yakalama ucunun çıkıyor. Dışı fiberglas. Yani darbe geldiğinde tamamen sistemden bağımsız indirebiliyorsunuz. Böylece e, hiçbir şekilde içerideki sistemlere indiklenmiyor. E, yani izole etmenin tek yolu e, izoleli iletken Okey, kullanabiliriz ama iletken bir yüzey varsa izoleli yakalama uçları da kullanmamız en doğrusu. Böylece e, temas e, dokunma geriliminden kurtuluyoruz, manyetik alandan kurtuluyoruz. Yani birçok fayda sağlıyor. Bu ürünü e, örneğin e, mesela şu başımıza geldi kamera sistemi var. Kamera sistemine yakalama ucu koyuyoruz ama kamera sistemi tüm elektriksel sistemle bağlı olduğu için kameraya düşen bir yıldırım direkten direkt elektrik hattına atlayabiliyor. Oraya kullanacağımız sistem izoleli olup birazdan Martin de anlatır. Harici bir topraklama sonrası spark eple eş potansiyeli alırsak sistemi tamamen koruma altına almış olabiliyoruz. Yani izoleli sistemler broşürde vardı mutlaka iletken yüzeyse kullanılması gerekiyor. Yes. So, Pardon. of course, you have to go to... Uh, go ahead.
Döşemedeki topraklamayı bağlayabilir miyiz? İzole ile etkeni eş potansiyele bağlayabilir evet. miyiz mi diyorsun? Evet. Martin'e soralım. Ya şöyle ben kendi yorumumu söyleyeyim. Binadan manyetik alanı kurtarmak için parafodurları her yerde tip 1 artı 2 kullanmıyorsak aşağı kadar izoleli inip e, en güvenlisi o. <gülüyor> Tam olarak soru e, en üst katta mesela 5 katlı bir binamız var. Can you go uh, previous? Yeah. Yani şurada e, global termination dediği yeri beni döşeme düşünün. Evet. Şuradaki, e, ring döndüğü döşeme. Oradan sonrası iletken değil ama. Aşağı çıplak iniyorsun. Aşağı yok. E, döşemenin altında lama var. Rabeli zaman. O aşağı kadar iniyor. Ha, e, anladım. E, so there what's is the question? A gr grounding e, earthing or yeah. a structure mm -hmm. and grounding uh, galvanized strip uh, go up and uh, you can connect it uh, this grounding uh, earthing yeah you can this is actually represented right here if you look at it it actually has the insulated cable and then it continues with conventional cable so um, but I just want to point this out this picture is wrong because you would I'd, or maybe it's from a different angle but you can you don't want to never do this type of thing you if the down conductor you have it has to have a downward uh, direction you can never make a right angle and just go like this up what you know I have to correct this because this is you know you don't never do this if you wanna if you have to get from this point to this point you have to have an angle tram very slight angle and go slow up or you can drill through the wall and just connect the cable in this point okay but to your point so this is a conventional lightning protection system because now what happened is that using the insulated cable to bypass um, so let's say like a Sardar set it could be like an antenna or camera so you know the the cable can be uh, very close to the camera and nothing should happen but then you pass to a certain point and you can transfer to a uh, conventional cable the best scenario is to use the insulated cable all the way to the earth but if you cannot do it you can actually splice it somewhere uh, you know but that's that's good not it can be connected like this to like exothermically welded or it should be on a ground bar that's insulated from the structure does it answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Ama burada hani dış yıldırımlık açısından olabilir ama biz her zaman iç yıldırımlı düşündüğümüz için en güvenli bir seçmek daha mı? Can you write the question down and I'll talk to you because I'm running out of time. I I need to complete the presentation. So sorry. Okay. So this is actually laboratory testing. So, you know, now you want to actually in laboratory to prove that the cable performs the way you want, you need, you, you expecting. So you actually have a, a grounding uh, rod that has a certain separation distance from a rod that's connected to the cable. So initially you start hitting it with a certain pulse of current and then, you know, you have the transfer of the energy happen only between the rods nothing happened at the cable portion sorry uh, just put pressing okay nothing actually is cross flashing in this area right here but as you increasing the the energy uh, so then you don't have the cross flash here but it happens over here and what it means that you reach the lim limit of the cable so the cable can withstand only certain energy so when it cross flashes here then then the test is done and so let's say that you actually vary the distance by you know initially you have a half meter distance and you know you have a cross flash here now you increase the distance right here to 0.6 meters and you get a cross flash here not over here so that tells you that your cable is good to let's say half meter separation distance so now the insulated cable can also be used actually in a, uh, as I mentioned, in your structure. So you again have a striking 
point in the middle and the current is splitting two different directions. And uh, you know, you're following the KC for, um, again, for single or double conductors. So you would apply this, uh, this portion. But the, what the lab does, actually, it gives you the separation distance for the insulated cable also. So you have to pay attention to that. So then, this is calculation actually of the KC. So you have a height of the structure, you have the distance between the two points, and then you also have uh, uh, the, the point when the lightning strikes. So that all matters. So you see that it would be difference, like we saw in the house, if this struck in the middle, then the current is splitting this direction. But over here, I mean, maybe more of the energy goes this way and then less that way, right? So when you calculating the KC, so you have the height plus the distance, and then, you know, this is the formula. So let's say you would have your H would be 20 meters, and it's going to be 40 meters. So you have 60 meters divided by 80 meters, which is 0.75. So you have a separation distance of... 0.75 meters. Now, the standard, you have to go to the standard, uh, and it gives you different scenarios. So these examples are directly from the standard. So you can see that, you know, in this case, you have two down conductors. Here you have a four down conductors. So the KC value changes. And that also matters where the lightning protection strikes. So if, let's say, the, you know, it would be a reverse scenario if it strikes over here, right? So it can get more complex as you go, so you're increasing the number of down conductors. Then this is a special case. You see uh, that's a very common, let's say, for British standard because they have the mesh over the building. So you have different formula. And then you actually, you know, that also matters where this strike, if it's here, here, or there. So you follow this formula. I have like a better pictures here. So you can also use software. I mean, the, you know, it's pretty much what you do is, uh, you know, you uh, modeling the, this, this system right here uh, with equivalent circuit of resistant networks. So, you know, you have to assign, I mean, by measuring, I mean, what are the values of the resistance of the wire and stuff, and then you can put it in the networks like this and calculate it. So, you know, these are just examples. So you see that you actually have the grounding, that's the source, the strike, and then you have the striking point also. So that allows you to actually, you know, do that. For, for here, I mean, you, again, you know, that's a more complex, a network that you have to uh, construct for uh, like a block building. And then this gives some, uh, you know, uh, point pointers here. Then if you have strike over here, the current splits evenly four different directions. Uh, so quarter of the energy goes each like four directions, right? And then every junction point after that, you get half of that. So that's how the current actually divides. So, uh, and you see that the, the formula is even more complex. But again, this example is directly from the standard, so you can refer to that. So now another important aspect of this is that, you know, you have a different grounding system. So this actually creates like a, uh, um, um, uh, you know, a loop around the foundation of the building. So it's actually a equipotential system. I mean, you have pretty much same resistance no matter where you go and measure. But here, you have actually, uh, you know, two, I mean, four separate, uh, uh, four separate, uh, uh, try, try uh, uh, you know, four, I'm sorry, four separate systems. That, so that's an uh, independent system for each, uh, each uh, down conductor. Uh, so, if, if the system is within factor of two from each other with the resistance, then you're okay. But if not, then you have to assume that the KC is equal one. So, if there's a factor of two difference between 
you know, the individual grounding systems, then you have to change KC to one. So then you actually, uh, now we're coming to the special uh, uh, conductor. So it's not the, uh, um, Sardar, how are you calling it here, the insulated conductor or is it? Insulated, insulated conductor. So this is, this is not the insulated conductor. It looks like it, but it's a, that's the special conductor that I was talking about. So the, the advantage of this, this conductor actually is that it has a very low impedance. So the insulated conductor can have a high impedance, but this has a very low impedance. And it's in the structure of the conductor. So there is a support pipe, then you have a 50 millimeter square cable, then there is a copper sheeting, and then you have a three, triple layer. So it looks like a single layer, but actually it's a semiconductor insulator and semiconductor. And then you have another shield, and then you have a semiconductive outer layer. And then the, the cable also has a special upper termination. So it's pretty much very similar to medium voltage cable insulation that would use, be used in utility, uh, but it has a, just a different rating. Uh, so uh, reduces risk, risk of a site flash, selection of the route to ground. Most of the energy contains in the, in the uh, cable, uh, uh, relatively easy to retrofit. So you can use this cable with conventional lightning rod, or you can use it with uh, the interceptor that you're uh, using here in, uh, in, uh, um, uh, in Turkey, because actually it's, you know, the, the new uh, French standard allows to have insulated down conductors. Uh, and the reduction to nearby electric equipment. So, so it, it, this con conductor really works very well in the situations that, let's say you have a building and you have to route the uh, cable through a mechanical or electrical riser inside of the building, it's concealed. So, you know, this minimizes also the, the field that goes around the cable and, uh, you know, so it's, it has many different uh, good uh, um, aspects. So this is the insulated cable. So I was talking about the, we call that cable, the previous cable, Ericor cable. But this is the insulated conductor. So also it's a 50 millimeter square. It could be alumin, aluminum or, or copper. Uh, then, you know, this is the insulation and, and the outer shield has a semiconductive property. What's important about the semiconductive property in this cable or also with the previous, the Ericor cable, is that, you know, it equalizes, it's a capacitive coupling of the cable because it creates a field around it with the structure. And if you have a semiconductive layer on the outer portion, so that, and you bond the cable to the structure in certain intervals, it allows equalizing of the charges. So uh, this is pretty much some of the highlights that I just mentioned. Uh, it requires that the terminal actually is placed at least two meter above the highest point on the structure. This is, uh, you know, kind of the system. It's not just the cable, but that's the whole system. So it has a mast. The cable has an upper and lower termination. It's more uh, displayed over here. So, you know, this is how the, the, the rod actually couples into the cable itself. And then you have a lower termination that this portion will be uh, uh, connected to the, to the grounding system. So also we have a laboratory testing. I mentioned it in the previous thing. So any system we have, we have a third party certification for the system. Uh, uh, so, you know, these are some of the usages uh, that you can, you know, that the cable is very, very good suitable for. Uh, and then this actually, uh, now we'll talk about the standard NFC 17102, which is the French standard. And, you know, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but I, you should know that there is actually some 
uh, aspects of this standard change. The main change in this standard from the previous version is that they actually reference IEC standard for the components. So if any, the, the components that are part of the system have to be compliant with the IEC standard just like any, any other system uh, you know, that is compliant to, to IEC. And then they also increase the, the test current from uh, the S. Uh, uh, I, I want to add something. Uh, the IEC yeah, I just want to say this, that, uh, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. that it should withstand 50 shots of 100 kA of search 10350. That's the curve. Şimdi IEC normunda biz şu ana kadar pasif yakalama uçları, izoleli iletkenler, ondan sonra e, yuvarlanan küre metodu, koruma açısı yöntemi, S separated distance, bunların hepsi IEC 62.305'te geçiyor. Fakat e, bu sunum eklemesindeki neden de bizim ülkemizde NFC 1702 yani aktif paratoner %90 oranında kullanılıyor. E, dediğim gibi doğrusu IEC normları fakat NFC'de neler anlatılıyor? Onlarla ilgili de işte early streamer sistem olarak biraz e, e, bahsedecek Martin. Hı -hı. Bu e, IEC normundan farklı olarak Fransızların NFC 1702 standartı. Yes. Okay, so um Initially, uh, Erico had uh, this style of the uh, SI interceptor that was to the old standard. But for the new standard, we have this style that with SI 25, 40, and 60. And you know, the design of it, the rings, they actually distinct the, you know, the rating on a, on a triggering system. So you have the SI 60 has you know, four rings, two rings, and no rings. So you know, th they don't have any other function but for the end user to be able to distinguish what rating of the trigger mechanism is there. And of course it has a 316 uh, stainless steel, uh, so it's uh, environmentally friendly and so forth. Again, we have a full test report for performance of it. Uh, so this is actually, we have a, a, like a software that we use that actually has the formulae from the standard. So we can actually like uh, model the shape of the building and then we can, you know, place the terminals and it shows us, you know, the coverage, uh, uh, you know, if the building is protected or not. This is actually the formula that's used. And you can see that, you know, the coverage is pretty much just like an umbrella over the building. So it's not sensitive, this particular thing is not sensitive that the corners can be struck uh, more often than, uh, you know, than, uh, uh, than, let's say, you know, portion of uh, right here or, you know, so it it's also has sort of like a same statistical probability of uh, where the system can, can struck. Um, uh, so um, this is some actually some of the assumption that SI interceptor radius of protection is based on the formula from the standard. Many s assumptions in this standard contribute to overstated protection area. So it's, you know, the area of this, this terminal is, is humongous. Compared to System 3000, that's the next topic that I'm going to talk about, uh, the protection using the collect collection volume method of System 3000. So when you compare those two, you know, the System 3000 is much more conservative. Uh, you know, also one of the bigger assumption in that is that generator waveform delta T is uh, as, um, estimated from the leader uh, uh, initiation time, sorry, uh, rather than from a time to stabilize le leader protection. So I was talking about how the uh, uh, leader pro uh, uh, uh, propagate through the through the atmosphere so this really doesn't pay attention to this system doesn't pay attention to that fact Ma Ma Martin ten, yeah. ten minutes. no I have 15 more minutes actually because we had we started late so I'm shooting for that so any lightning protection system is actually like a insurance on your car if you have a Mercedes you want to protect it more than if you have some more economical car so this is actually, again, you don't get 100% protection, but you 
actually this is a curve of cost versus protection. You want a more protection, you will, it will be more expensive, less protection, less expensive. I'm not going to go over this because Sardar did. So uh, this is actually comparing uh, IEC and American standards. So you have the series just for placing the terminal and for components. So NFPA 780, it's a most popular method in states, so they have, it matches the IEC standard. So uh, there are two aspects of lightning. So you have physical hardware, so you need the terminals and the wires and all that stuff. But then also you need the method how to place the terminal on the structure that you're going to get the proper protection, right? So that's, you know, important. Uh, so if you have a protection angle, it was, uh, it's, it's, it was invented in 1850, then mesh method in 1900s, mast and wires in 20s, that's catenary system, and electrogeometric model, the rolling sphere, goes to 40s. So these are the methods. So this is the, uh, sorry, this is the protection angle, this is the mesh, and this is the rolling sphere. So the rolling sphere electrogeometric model, you have a, you know, based on the protection, the radius of the sphere is certain, like 20 meters, let's say, for the 99% protection, and you literally roll it off the structure, and when it touches, that's where you place your terminals. Uh, so this I already explained also. Those are the protection methods. So if you look at this, is uh, just, uh, you know, all these methods, like so the protection angle is based in IEC British standard and FPA 780 standards. And you can see this is comparison of the protection angle and the rolling sphere. So the rolling sphere actually is more conservative because the protection angle, you would say, you will deem it protected. Sorry, I, this is too touchy. And, but it's really not. I mean, you know, with the rolling sphere, you know, this area would not be protected. I want to add something. Ee, şimdi yakalama ucu bir alfa açısı oluşturuyor. Bakın küre orada. Şimdi tek bir e, kule koruyup alfa ile koruyabiliriz. E, küreyi havaya kaldırmak istediğimizde hemen yanına bir yakalama ucu daha koyduğunuzda yuvarlanan küre metoduna geçiyorsunuz gibi basitçe düşünebilirsiniz. Koruma açısı oluşturma yöntemi hemen yanına bir tane daha yakalama ucu koyduk küre havada. Yani yuvarlanan küre metodu birden çok yakalama ucunun kullanılmasıyla e, ortaya çıkıyor diyebilirsiniz. Yani onların koruma alanlarını çizdiğinizde yeah. küre direkt havaya kalkıyor diye düşünebiliriz. So the mesh method also cover in all these. With mesh you get more conservative when you bring the cables more together or less conservative when you have a larger spacing. This is a catenary system. Um, these are some flaws of the, uh, uh, the, the electrogeometric model of the rolling sphere. This actually uh, covers the important concept of, this, of the striking distance, which is right here. But the rolling sphere actually assumes that if I have building like this, I have a same statistical pro pro probability that lightning can strike here, here, here, here, it's all same statistical probability. And we know that's really not true anymore, although this is the most commonly used method worldwide. But it has, this is one of the flaws that uh, I want to point out. I'm going to go quickly through this because we're running out of time. Uh, but the formula was actually uh, uh, this formula, which is used for the rolling sphere. Uh, was de uh, actually derived from a Berger's uh, a test data, Professor Berger. And, you know, if one professor comes and fit the curve through, the, through these points different way, then this will change. This uh, multiplier and also the, uh, the, the root will change based on how the f curve is fit through the, uh, through the system. So I'm going to skip through this and go uh, into a, uh, a collection value method. So collection value method is just another placement method. It's like protection angle or is it, you know, but it just has some additional uh, aspects to it, okay? 
So it, the key parameters is dam leader uh, or peak current or charge, field intensification factor, velocity ratio, and altitude. So you have much higher probability to be struck uh, in the higher elevations than on the sea level, you know, because the, the uh, uh, air is uh, thinner. Uh, improve striking distance relationship. So you have not just the peak current, but you have the K factor. We talk about it. This has a much more higher probability. The K is, you know, the determinant factor. So, uh, and then you have actually the striking distance, which is uh, represented by the uh, semi-sphere. It's, it's all 3D. You have to think about 3D. It's not just a line, but it's a volume. And then also you have this uh, uh, velocity derived limited fo focus, so it's, it's the parabola, which is actually a ratio of the upward and downward leader. So this method, you know, uh, consider many more factors, I mean, for, for the protection. Uh, now, this is actually, we know that, uh, you know, in most cases, you're as a design engineer choosing the protection level or the owner chooses protection level. But in substations, if you're in electrical substation, you actually, the protection level is related to the basic insulation level of the equipment. And we talk about the bypasses that can happen for different protection level. So if your equipment can withstand 3KA only, so you have to go to the highest protection level. So this is very important that, you know, in substation applications, you're not choosing the protection level. The protection level is dictated by the basic insulation level of the equipment. Again, testing in a laboratory. We have also testing in the field. So, you know, this is go quite quite far because we have this system around for a long time. So, you know, in, we did a study in Hong Kong and Malaysia. So we had theoretical uh, calculations that we predicted, uh, you know, characteristics of the system. And that was all verified by, uh, you know, uh, monitoring the lightning strike and the intensity and so forth. So now, the System 3000, the, you know, has a special terminal. So you can treat the middle part, I mean, maybe uh, this is kind of, uh, let me go here. So this is the, the terminal, and the, the, the simulation that I have is the detail, sorry, is the detail of this, this portion right here. Oh, this is frustrating. So it's this gap right here. So when I go back, so I was talking about formation of the corona and then the upward leader, right? So this terminal is optimized to really be the preferred striking point. So one uh, important aspect is that you have very close, uh, this, uh, you know, this gap is very close and this has the weakest feel. This is actually the dome of the uh, dinosphere, and then this is a rod that actually is connected to the Earth. Uh, Eriko'nun Türkiye'de e, daha önce kullanılmayan, çok da satılmayan paratoner değil. Ama elektrik manyetik alanıyla yıldırımı çeken bambaşka bir teknolojisi var. Ve e, gerçekten e, bir iki yerde deneme olarak da uygulandı. Amerika'da ve dünyanın birçok yerinde bu ürünleri kullanıyorlar. Sistem 2000, Sistem 3000 adında geçiyor. Ve yine bunları katalotlardan inceleriz. Ben de bir bununla ilgili makale yazacağım. Yılkomer.com'dan okuyabilirsiniz ama hem ekonomik açıdan hem de koruma açısından çok farklı bir sistem. Manyetik alana göre çalışıyor ama paratoner değil kesinlikle. Bu sistemin üzerine de inceleme yapabilirsiniz. So you have actually, you have the dome, the shape of the dome, you have the rod, and then the third component that's very important is variable impedance component. So this is like a conventional rod that's connected to the earth, but it's separated from the dome by variable impedance unit that's sensitive to a change of the electric field 
when the, the uh, cloud and the earth, the field between that intensifies. And so this is pretty much the static, uh, static uh, thunderstorm phase. And then as it goes dynamic, you actually have this is charged by the charges of the earth, which are positive. So that's this. Then you have the air gap. And then the dome starts taking the charges of the cloud but they are able to bleed through the unit to the ground. But then you have the control trigger streamer. So when the conditions are right, you know, there's a, like a, you can call it avalanche event that the charges are not able to bleed to the earth, but they actually cross flash here and send the upward leader. So, uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the dinosphere terminal that we just discussed. It has a different shape of the, uh, the tip based on the height. So that all comes with the, uh, the, the system. And then you have the upper termination and other accessories. And this is pretty much how the system is put together. So you have a cantilevered or we can have a guided mast. And then, you know, part of the system is a... Uh, uh, non-conductive uh, mass that goes over the upper termination. Then you have an inline coupler that will allow you to the cable to get out of the insulated mass. And then we have also a lightning counter. So if the system gets hit by lightning, it gets recorded. Again, we use software to actually do the modeling. So the, the building itself is a real model. You give us a uh, elevations and the dimension of the building and we actually uh, you know do this so you have three terminals here but of course it depends how you position them so the difference between let's say the interceptor system and this system is that the interceptor system it does it completely ignores this that doesn't exist but the red points here the red areas is that because of the K factor so there's an area over here that has the, that's actually extend past this point, but it has the same statistical prob probability that anywhere in this volume, if the lightning strike, I mean, that has the same thing, same statistical probability that I'm over here only. So it's a little, it's more conservative system. And so if it's not covered, it shows you that, you know, the, the blue uh, section, the lighter blue, is actually the protection level of each terminal and these darker uh, colors is actually the the area created by the intensification field around the building okay and then uh, this is an interesting uh, photo that came from a field there is a black mountain in uh, uh, in Mexico in very high elevation I think it's like uh, maybe uh, 5,000 meters yes. and there was actually a radio telescope in there so radio telescope is equipment that actually shoots certain frequency to different objects in space and returns back and can tell you the shape or material and all that so it's a it's a scientific installation and then uh, you know uh, high wind and uh, ice collapsed the tower and we collected the dinosphere and the dinosphere was struck by 598 times and you can see this is 316 stainless steel so you can you can tell that there was some serious lightning intensity probably close to 200 k maybe to uh, you know uh, to uh, you know to do that but we actually inspected the unit and it was still functional so this is sort of like a field testimonial and then you know these are some modeling in the substations you know so we have freestanding mast that's a very popular way to do it in substations or then I have a one example from a uh, generating plant it's a it's a um, you know um, a fuel generated plant so you can do you know the the modeling for it and then you protect it so I think that's concluding my presentation. I am involved, like every engineer, every engineer from Erico is 
associate it and represent the company on different industry standards. So I, uh, I mostly represent Erico on IEEE and also on the rail standards. So this concludes my presentation. So I just want to say for myself and for our company and our colleagues from Envent that I really appreciate your time from your busy schedules to actually come to the conference and listen to our presentation. So I hope it was uh, somewhat helpful or you know, informative. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, your attention and you know, for your participation. Thank you. Bir plaket törenimiz olacak. Beş dakika daha sabrederseniz soru cevabı da e, sorularınız var. E, yemek bölümünde yaparız. Hepimiz orada olacağız. E, yemek yerken soru cevap yaparız. E, Ozan. E, Mr. Arguris, e, Francesco, Arans, can you come here? All together. Milan, please come here. E, e, we will do... E, we will do question, answer question, fruit yeah. uh, together. Yes, okay. yes, okay. Uh, we have uh, some present for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you shouldn't okay. have. Uh, Frances, say, Martin, you will Martin. Martin. <laughs> what did you say? Mr. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, oh. interest. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Francesco. <laughs> yes. Also, thank you very much for your uh, come. Thank, Thank you. you to you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Mr. Argiris. Or Alexander. We should actually take a picture yes, together. Mr. Alexander. All together. Can you take us also <laughs> just when we're here? Yeah, thank you <laughs> yeah. very much for your... Uh, <laughs> uh, do you want to say Turkish or something? No, so sorry. <laughs> I say or it's a current dream, okay? But thank you, Serdar, for your organization. Everything was perfect. I think that everybody enjoyed this training and uh, for sure you are a great partner for us in Turkey and we will support you during your job on the field and we will support you of course for any kind of request. Thank you so much. Yes, yes Mr. Agris. Yes, the strike sort man. <laughs> thank you very much for your... Uh, yes, oh, thank you. I, let's take a picture together, I'll ask them to with, with Sardar. And Mr. Milan, uh, Milan Hollanda'dan geliyor, tüm dünyada teknik destek veriyor, yani projelerinizi no. kendisi no. çiziyor. No. Uh, bugün sunum yapmadı ama I thank, have to go fast, I have to go fast. This is a Sizlere de katılımınız için çok teşekkür ederiz. Uh, Bizlere tüm bu sunumlara Yılkomer.com'a ekleyeceğim. Oradan alabilirsiniz. Ayrıca mail atarak da paylaşım yapabiliriz. Yılkomer'i Instagram'da ve Facebook'ta takip ederseniz birçok uygulama görseli, yani Türkiye'de yaptığımız uygulamaları orada görme şansınız olacak. Yeniden katılımınız için teşekkür ederiz. Sizleri yemek alanına davet ediyoruz. Uh, Sardar, we would like to take a picture with you. E, sertifika ha. konusunda e, şimdi çok fazla katılım olduğu için e, RECAP ve e, Eriko imzalı sertifikalar vereceğiz. Sizden ricam e, yani info adresine bir mail atarsanız yeah, unuturuz. E, biz onları organize edeceğiz. Info'ya mail atmanız yeter. Yeah, we'll take a picture ah, yeah. together. Spencer's coming also, so.